Hi, and welcome to the Getting Started with Database Migration Service session as part of Google Cloud Next. My name is Shachar. I'm the product manager for the Google Cloud Database Migration Service. With me, I have Ina. She's a senior engineering manager in the team. So today, we're going to focus on database migration. And what we hear from customers, uh, the, the main reason why they want to move to the cloud, and specifically to our cloud databases, is first of all, cost, right? When you have a database that you need to maintain and preserve and have teams that are constantly working on that database, upgrading it and scaling it, this is basically cost that is taken directly from your ability to innovate, right? You can take this cost of managing a database and invest it in, for example, exposing a new experience to your customers on developing your business and accelerate it. So the first reason is cost. The second is that there are in the Google Cloud and in the cloud in general, globally scalable and performance service that exist only there, right? Let's say that I have a database that I want to scale it and I want it to be available in a way that only Spanner can offer, right? It's globally uh, available and scalable. So only if I would move to Google Cloud databases, I would be able to have this, um, this type of database and this type of experience. So usually when customers are moving to, to our cloud databases, they have one of three types of journeys. The first journey is what we call migrate journey. This is the journey where customers are moving from the same engine to the same engine. Let's say they're moving from MySQL to CloudSQL for MySQL, or they move from Postgres to CloudSQL Postgres or ODB or SQL Server to SQL Server, right? The expectation from this type of journey is basically just lifting and shifting the databases as is and moving to a managed database, right? They don't want to manage the database, so they want to move, to, for example, to Cloud SQL as the managed database. So everything they want to, to remain as is besides the manageability layer, right? So the, expect, the uh, expectation is that it would be extremely simple, sort of one-click migration, right? The second type of journey is the modernization journey. That means when the customers are basically switching from one engine type to another engine type. Let's say they want to move from legacy databases to modern open source databases. For example, Oracle to Postgres or SQL Server to Cloud SQL Postgres. In this journey, it's a bit more complicated, but the value of moving to an open source database is, is pretty huge, right? So uh, they are expe expecting that the migration would be uh, not as simple as the migrate one because they will need to do some preparation, right? They need to prepare the environment. They need to do some conversion of the code, of the application code. They need to do some schema conversion. So the process will take more time. And this is what we call an heterogeneous migration. So customers are expecting it will take more time and more effort. The third type of journey is the transform journey. This is when customers are moving to, uh, uh, they want to move their application and deliver new customer experience with databases that exist only in the cloud. For example, Spanner, as I mentioned. This is a very similar journey to the modernization, but throughout this journey, you're changing the application, basically exposing the new type of functionality and experiences that you can expose to your customers. So this is a transform journey. So why migration uh, are challenging, right? Migrations are complex. Usually when we see customers in some uh, in some occasions, they don't even know how many databases do they have, or they are not sure about what is the dependencies, right? When I move a database, what is the dependencies to the application layer? The impact here is organizational impact. It's not only the database team that um, is in charge on the migration. You have a networking team that need to establish connectivity. We have various teams of application engineers that need to change the application in case of heterogeneous migration. It's a time-consuming process, so it's never like something that you can do in an hour, especially in, in heterogeneous migration, right? Because you need to prepare a lot of things before actually running the migration. You need to make sure that you move the data in a reliable way and to do constant validation before actually doing the finalization of the migration. And it has risk, right? We all know that data is the lifeline of every business. So when you move and, and when you move a database from one place to another place, you're basically moving your mission critical databases, especially when you do it at scale. So we have customers that moved a single database, and we have customers that move hundreds of databases, right? And the risk is growing the more databases that you run. So usually what we see and what we have is that 
there are four migration steps, right? Especially heterogeneous. The first part is the assessment migration step. This is the part when customers are deciding which type of migration are they going to perform. Are they going to move from the same engine to the same engine, do homogeneous migration, basically stay, for example, in MySQL or Postgres, and then the, level, the assessment is pretty short? Or are they moving from Oracle to Postgres? And then they need to understand what is the impact of this movement, right? Which conversion they need to make? How many? Uh, changes will they need to do? What is the cost of this uh, uh, of this conversion or, or this migration? So the assessment, in the end of the assessment, basically customers has all the steps they need to do in order to complete this migration, and they can go to the next step, which is preparing the environment for this migration. In the environment setup uh, phase, they're preparing their environment for the migration. That means they're converting the schema from one engine to another engine in which they're converting the database code, they are converting their uh, application code. For example, if, if, if the application is, is, uh, re is uh, written in a way that is writing to Oracle, they need to move it to writing to Postgres, right? They need to prepare their QA, their test, the production environment, uh, for example, with some test data in order to to test the migration before actually doing production migration and to define the connectivity. After they're finished with that step, they have an environment that is ready for the data migration. So the next natural step would be to move the data. When you move the data, there are basically two options. You can either move it with a long downtime, what we call a one-time migration, right? Which you just do backup and restore. Or you can do a continuous migration when you move the initial uh, dump on the initial snapshot and then continuous, continuously replicate data until the point that you feel it's safe to do the final cutover, right? And this is what we call ongoing or continuous migration. And the last part, which is extremely important, is the migration validation. This is the part where customers are testing their application and testing that everything migrated as they expected. So for example, they do some row counts, they check the fidelity of the data, and they're making sure that everything migrated as they expected before finalizing the migration and writing to the new database. So last year, we introduced the database migration service for homogeneous migration. So we introduced it for MySQL and Postgres, homogeneous migrate migration. And as I was saying, we introduced a service that is extremely simple uh, with no additional con as it's serverless. So the customers don't need to maintain any server. It supports MySQL and Postgres, and we are utilizing native replication methods. So this basically ensures you as a customer higher fidelity and greater reliability. Something that we're really proud of is that more than 85% of our migrations are underway in less than an hour. This means that our migration service is extremely simple to set up and start your migration. And again, for a migrant journey, this is extremely impo important, simplicity. We actually introduced earlier this year uh, uh, migration path that is modernization, right? From Oracle to Postgres. So customers can use DMS to move their data and schema from Oracle to Postgres. Again, this is a serverless migration. So you're, the customers are not the owners of the replication. They don't need to preserve it. We are doing that for them. And we move their data again in a reliable way and they can monitor the migration progress. We integrate it to Aura 2PG, open source, you know, highly uh, um, adopted schema conversion tool. So customers can do their schema conversion in Aura 2PG and then use DMS to do the data movement. And lastly, we introduced a migration path to AlloyDB. So homogeneous migrations from PostgreSQL to AlloyDB. So basically what we did is we took the migration path to AlloyDB and made it simple and faster like any other PostgreSQL migration that we have. If you ever used DMS to do a PostgreSQL migration, doing an AlloyDB migration of PostgreSQL will look exactly the same. So again, serverless, secure, no additional cost, and utilizes the native replication method. So now migration to AlloyDB are extremely simple, and this is exactly what Ino is going to show you. Thank you, Shahar. Hi, my name is Ina Weiner, and I'm the engineering manager for Database Migration Service. Today, I will walk you through a quick migration from PostgreSQL to the new AlloyDB for PostgreSQL. If you've ever used DMS to migrate PostgreSQL databases, this will look familiar, as AlloyDB is Postgres compatible, so the migration steps are identical. And now to the demo. Now let's walk you through the DMS experience. You can access DMS from the cloud console navigation under databases. 
simply click Database Migration. To get started, you'll create a migration job which represents the end-to-end -end process of moving your data from source to the target. First, let's add more details like job name, ID, source, and destination type. Source will be PostgreSQL, and the destination will be AlloyDB for Postgres. The migration will be continuous, meaning DMS will migrate the database with minimal downtime. Based on my selections, DMS displays the pre-configurations required for a successful migration from the source and the steps designed, designed to achieve connectivity. Next step is to define my source database. I can do it by creating a new connection profile which represents how DMS connects to my source. These profiles aren't locked to an individual migration and can and should be reused. I've already created a connection profile for my PostgreSQL database running, running on GC, so I select it. Now I'm ready to create a new AlloDB cluster that I'll migrate my database to. If you've ever created an AlloDB for Postgres cluster, this will look familiar. You'll see many of the same options like machine configuration and connectivity, I'll make my selections and create the cluster. I'll choose the network. Instance ID and the machine type I want to use. Now I'm ready to define the connectivity between the source database to the newly created AlloDB cluster. Since my source is already running on Google Cloud, I'll choose VPC peering and choose the VPC I want to connect to. Now I've configured my source, created an AlloDB cluster, and established connectivity. The last step is to verify that all my configuration are cor correct and start the migration job. My migration job validation is happening now. I'm going to wait for it to pass successfully so that I can trust my migration will run smoothly. I can choose to start my migration or just create it. I choose to create and start immediately. Once my migration job has started, I can monitor the progress in the migration job details page. DMS will first transfer the initial dump of the data and then continuously replicate changes as they happen. Since DMS is serverless, I never need to worry about scaling the migration resources. Now that my migration job is in CDC phase, as you can see in the status, I can choose to promote the migration job. This will stop the replication from the source to the AlloyDB cluster. Once Promoted, I can configure my application to write to the brand new AlloyDB for PostgreSQL cluster, and the migration will be completed. It's that easy. To conclude, with just a few simple steps, I migrated my PostgreSQL database to AlloyDB for Postgres in a simple, secure, and serverless way. And that's it. Now that you are done with the demo, I just want to mention again that database migration service is serverless simple to use, as you've just seen, as well as you can trust Google to handle your migration in a secure and reliable way. So in order to start your migration today, simply go to Database Migration Service under Google Cloud Console. If you want to learn more, visit our documentation. And that's it. Thank you very much. Looking forward to seeing you among our happy customers.